Hey there, and welcome to Five Steps to Shaking Up Your Sketchbook Habit. I wanted to talk to you today, first of all, about what a sketchbook actually is, because we've got lots of different conceptions about what it is, what it's for, and what it can do. On a basic level, a sketchbook is a visual journal, it's a creative lab, and it's a filter for processing the information that you get from the surrounding world. So what do I mean by those things? A visual journal is a way of recording memories and experiences. A creative lab is a place to explore lots of different ideas with a degree of freedom that you just don't have when you are working on a more precious surface. So the Creative Lab is a place to work out ideas, try new materials, explore new things, to delve into your imagination and your creativity. A sketchbook is also a filter, a way to process all of the, the almost bombardment of information, visual information that we get from the world around us. It's a way to translate our experience of moving through the world into a visual format. Now, before we dive into those five steps I mentioned earlier, I want to talk just a little bit about the materials that you would use with Sketchbook. I have some definite preferences for myself with Sketchbooks, and I think everybody ends up with their own quirky preferences. But at the, at the most basic level, a Sketchbook is a collection of papers that you can draw and write in. My favorite brand is Moleskin, hands down. And I use both the hardbound Moleskin notebooks and the soft Moleskin paperback notebooks, wet sketchbooks when I'm out in the field. So one of the reasons that I love, love, love the Moleskin hardbound sketchbook is that it gives you the chance to work with a really heavy paper and it has an elastic band that holds the paper in place. The softbound moleskins come in a variety of different sizes, all the way from a very small, almost three by five inch size to a five by seven and on up. I like both this very small one and that medium sort of five by seven, five by eight inch size for working outside plein air. And one of the things that I found really handy when working with those type of sketchbooks is the old fashioned bear clip, using that to hold it open and to actually clip it to my easel so that the pages won't fly around while I'm working. The other crucial tool for working in your sketchbook is the pencil, pen, brush, or whatever other materials you're using to make those marks in the sketchbook. And here you can see some of my favorite marking implements. I have a regular drawing pencil, usually an HB. Then I have an ebony pencil, which makes a much darker mark. A Sigma brush pen, which gives you a calligraphic brush-like mark a regular old-fashioned Sharpie and a ballpoint pen, as well as my absolute favorite drawing pencil, which is a Ticonderoga black pencil. It's just a regular graphite pencil you can get at any um, office supply store. Now, the way I use my sketchbook most of the time is to make thumbnail studies and notants in preparation for paintings that I'm working on, particularly when I'm working plein air. Now in this particular sketch right here, I am working out the three to five values and the five to seven shapes that you can see in this photograph right here in preparation for using this to create a small painting. So you can see me identifying the main value masses here and then assigning each one of those value masses a single value and shading it in. So that by the time I'm finished with that sketch, I have a value roadmap to go by in the painting itself. 
Now, one of the things that I love about working with a pencil, and here you can see I'm working with that Ticonderoga that I love so much, is that it's very easy to adjust the values as you go. So while I start out with the darkest dart being one value range, I can adjust it and tweak it as I go. So this is my standard use for my sketchbook. But we're going to talk in just a minute about some things that you can do to shake that practice up that can really help to jumpstart your painting practice or just continue feeding your imagination and adding to your creativity as you're working on that sketchbook process. So let's go to number one. So these five things are the steps that you can take in order to shake up your sketchbook habit. Materials, methods, drawing type, subject, and process. So what I mean by these things are you can change the materials. That means if you're usually using graphite, switch to ink. Try a brush pen. If you are used to working with areas of shade and tone, then switch your method. Try using line, cross hatching, or stippling. If your drawing type normally is a full range of values, try working with, say, a contour or even a blind contour drawing. If your subject matter is normally landscape, try doing a simple still life. And last, you can change up the process, which means if you normally work, for example, from observation, try diving into using your imagination. So in these next two quick demos, you're gonna see me combine some of these different processes together in order to create a couple of sketches that are radically different from the way that I normally work, shaking up my sketchbook process. Let's dive in. Here I'm using a Sigma brush pen, which has a really soft fluid tip to it and can make a mark that is really calligraphic. That's the first thing that I'm changing, the actual material that I'm working with. Then the second thing that I'm changing is the method. I normally work with a full range of tone. Here I'm working simply with line and I'm using the thickness and the thinness of the line to create the illusion of light and dark where the light is falling on the picture plane here. And as well I am creating a different type of drawing. I am using a contour line around the objects. It's a, a more complex contour in that I'm drawing some of the, the contours around those interior shapes, but it's still a contour drawing, a very different process than I normally work with. The third thing, actually it's the fourth thing that I'm doing here that's different, is that I'm working with a subject that I don't normally use. I'm not normally working with still lives, but here I'm drawing a cup resting on the edge of a windowsill. Now in this sketch, I am using a technique to jumpstart my imagination that's been around for a couple of hundred years, if not longer. It goes back to the 18th century to an English watercolorist named Cousins, who used to work um, from his imagination inspired by literally crumpling up a piece of paper and putting ink on it, stretching it out, and using whatever was on there as the inspiration for his drawing. So all you need to have in order to explore this, this option is to take an ordinary piece of paper, crumple it into a ball, apply ink or use a Sharpie like I did here to mark all over where it's crumpled, flatten it out, and then look for patterns that look interesting to you that could inspire a sketch or an idea. Here, the marks on the wrinkles in the paper 
reminded me of a mountain range. And so I grabbed my ballpoint pen and began to build up that mountain range using crosshatching. So the things that I've switched up here, I'm working from uh, my imagination instead of direct observation. I've changed up the subject for sure because I'm, I'm not normally a mountain painter. I am using crosshatching, which is a different method than normal. And I'm playing with a ballpoint pen instead of my graphite pencil. So I hope that looking at all of these different options that are out there has inspired you to think about your sketchbook in a little bit different way. If you've gotten into a rut and you found yourself repeating the same drawing over and over and over in your sketchbook, if it's not effective for you in creating ideas for your paintings or for your other artworks, then try mixing up these five things, try taking these five steps to give yourself a clean slate to explore some new ideas. In other words, to really use that sketchbook as a creative lab to switch things up and play around with new ideas. I hope you have enjoyed this training and be sure to download the PDF that goes along with the training. It gives you a number of different ideas of things that you can explore in your sketchbook to jumpstart that creative edge. Happy painting, everybody. Bye-bye for now.